All right, as we head to bed tonight, we're fairly quiet out across the valley once again after some serious melting. And if you've noticed the piles of snow in the FM area, they're compressing, compacting, and melting down quite a bit. So that sun goes to work during the daylight hours. Still holding on to 22 degrees. Feels like 10, though, as that wind is still over 10 miles per hour with a northerly component to it. So it's blowing some drier air into the valley as we head into the overnight hours. 19s in Cavalier and Langdon this hour. 23 Valley City while your neighbors to the west on I-94 in Jamestown in the upper teens. It's 10 degrees warmer than that in Bedette at 29, 27 in Detroit Lakes. Fergus Falls also in the upper 20s. There's our north flow of wind across the valley. Everybody's seeing at least some northerly component to those winds, 5 to 15 miles per hour. With all the sun today, and as earlier mentioned, temperatures in the low 50s in Hedinger, uh, North Dakota, and in the Rapid City area in the Black Hills, it hit almost 70 degrees today. Now, we do see why they got so warm. A lack of snow pack in this area on the visible satellite. Notice that the snow aerial coverage is not retreating yet, though, so the snow pile's still deep enough to not be retreating any at this time. So we'll see those warmer conditions continue where the land is uh, poking through the snow banks out there to the west. Any showers of snow moving through the northern Rockies right now, and for us, that's a long ways away, so it promises to be another quiet day. But overnight, we're going to see temperatures slip down into the single digits. The north winds drawing the cooler air in to our northern counties as we begin our morning hours on Thursday. As we go to the south and east, temperatures warm up to the teens and low 20s to start the day. But this area of eastern portions of North Dakota and the southern valley will have the best chance at seeing some areas of patchy fog here and there. That should burn off fairly quickly as this dry north wind continues to blow and dry us out. And the wind becomes light and variable through the midday hours, but that cool air is going to limit that warming, particularly in our northern half of the viewing area. So say Highway 200 and points north will notice a cool down for your Thursday, while the rest of us in the south will see temperatures about what we did today, although not any 40s out there. A lot of 30s across the area with sunny skies and an easterly component to the wind at the end of the day. 16 to start your morning. Temperatures ramp up to 34. A lot of sunshine. Again, easterly winds 5 to 15 miles per hour with gradually decreasing clouds late in the day. Best chance at those mid 30s will be in the Southern Valley. So some daytime mel melting of your snow banks continue. 28 in Roseau means we'll stay below freezing for many of our northern counties. Uh, the snow a little bit hard out there and you can actually walk on it, say these pheasants. Melody, thank you for uploading your rural Grand Forks photo there. And here is a look at your planning forecast. So a little drop in temperatures for many up north on our Thursday, but we're back to warmer conditions on the uh, close of the work week on Friday. And again, we'll see some 40s out in Lakes Country and in the trees. Saturday, I think Fargo has a shot at some 40 degree weather. Models still disagreeing on exactly how warm we get. One of them has us up to nearly 50. I still think we have just too much snow on the ground, Mike Morkin, to see 50 here in Fargo. Monday, our next chance of precipitation as a storm passes from points south of Watertown into southern Minnesota. There could be some significant snow for those areas. For us, I think we just get clipped with a few flakes in our south. How many models do you have? Uh, a lot of models. Okay, I like the one up to 50 degrees. Okay. Just concentrate <laughs> Put your vote on in that now. One. Yeah. yeah, thanks.